Hi everyone, I'm Katisha, and welcome to another episode of Kitty Crow Creations. Guess what? Today we're painting a Volkswagen bus. And of course, because I'm girly girly, I had to make mine pink. But you can make yours any color you want. So feel free to tune in today to the tutorial, or you can watch it and then come back later and paint it. But I hope you find it something that's very interesting for you. I'll try to make the process as simple as possible. And remember to subscribe and hit the notification button. And come along and join me on another artistic journey. I look forward to seeing you. Bye for now. Hi, everyone. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we, Like I said, we're painting a Volkswagen bus. I'm so excited about this painting. Um, I usually don't paint cars but or vehicles, but I just thought this would be so much fun. And I've always, always wanted a Volkswagen bus. And why I don't have one, I don't know. So who knows, maybe I'll get one in the future if I can get someone to fix one up for me and make it pink and make it all cute and inside. But anyway, um, what I let's talk about my materials. I have my palette paper. But like I said, you can use a, a paper plate. I have, I'm using an 11 by 14 canvas and I've pre-sanded it and I've also painted the background with antique white. So that's one of the colors you're going to be using and needing is antique white. And then I also um, went ahead and transferred on the, um, the image and I transferred on the image with my usual this is a um, Sorel transfer paper. So I have that, so I'm using that. And um, I ordered some rolls of the uh, Sorel transfer paper and I'm glad I did that because so in one of my next videos, I'll show you what it looks like. And I also want you to um, make sure that when you have your canvas, like my, when I started with my canvas, it was like kind of buckling in the middle. So what I did, I turned it over on the back and I sprayed it. You don't want to, I keep saying don't use a water bottle this big, but this is what I had, so that's what I use. I cleaned it out with bleach and everything and, and sterilized it to make sure it doesn't have any contaminants. And so what I did, I just when I sprayed the back of this, and then when I did, it tightened it up. Because if you think about it, that's what this is. This is canvas. This is canvas that's been gessoed numerous times and then wrapped around a frame, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm using today are my usuals. I am using a, um, I might use, this is a 5 8 inch ruby satin silver angle brush. I might use this. I haven't decided yet, but I, I put it out just in case. I'm definitely going to be using my 1 half inch uh, ruby satin silver angle brush, as well as to get some smaller areas. I have a 1 fourth inch angle brush and then I just have this number three line, uh, round brush so those are the things we're going to use so first and foremost let's go ahead and 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 get out my first colors the first thing I'm going to use I'm going to use I'm going to take out some titanium white let me get my uh, something I don't have that I usually I'm using I have a usually have a towel on my on my lap so let me get that so I'm using titanium. I'm going to go ahead and put out some titanium white. I'm going to put out my first couple of colors. So we're going to start off with some titanium white. And then also I'm going to get my quinacridone magenta. We're going to be using a lot of titanium white and quinacridone magenta, obviously, because our, our um, main color is pink. So let's go ahead and get that started. As you can see in the reference photo up above, I want to talk about a couple things before we before we continue. When you're painting, remember, when you see something with your eyes, you assume you know what it is you're seeing. Like when we look at Chrome and we look at you know windows and things like that, we don't really analyze what it really consists of. And you will see that that when I'm doing the Chrome and then when I'm doing the windows, it's all kind of different colors to get the effect of chrome or to get the effect of the, of the actual window. And those are things you have to think about when you're painting. Uh, you got to slow down and look at your image. And I, I think it's very important to have a reference photo to help you understand how things should look. And I know for me, I 
I, you know, I don't usually paint chrome or anything like that, but I, I'm learning. And so what I do when I'm, when I'm paint, I always start off with a reference photo because I'm still learning and I'm not, I wouldn't really say I'm a master artist. I'm definitely not a master artist and I'm still learning. So I'm always trying to, trying to find ways to better, better, um, better analyze an art, you know, art uh, concepts. And one of the things I need to make sure I do is look closely at what I'm doing. That's, and, and I have a reference photo and I can't, I can't create what I don't have an, a lot of background knowledge about. So by looking at a reference photo, it helps me really understand the details of what it is I'm going to paint. So a reference photo is not cheating. A reference photo is actually a good resource. And even the reference photo that I had for this, I completely changed my, my artwork. I just use it as, as a reference to help me understand how I'm, going to, how I'm going to paint. So let me go ahead and get started. Let me stop talking. So what I'm going to do, the top of the, um, the, top of the bus I'm just going to go ahead and start off with my uh, quinacridone magenta. But the top of the bus, it has a lot of white. It has a lot of white because there's a lot of, there's um, apparently some light casting on it. So I'm going to start off with the um, quinacridone and I'm just going to start going and adding white. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to brush it on lightly, as lightly as I can. Isn't that color, isn't that color beautiful? I just, and you know, in my previous videos, I'm always telling you that the colors, quinacridone magenta, doxazine purple, phthalo blue, even ultramarine blue, they look lovely in general, but when you add that white to it, it really just brings out a beautiful, distinct color in them. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of that pink in there, that quinacridone magenta in there, which is pink. And someone has asked, has, I think they've asked if you can make, because some colors you can put, uh, you can create them, like putting colors together and making the colors. I think quinacridone magenta is one of those colors that you, if you try to blend colors together, you still won't get that color. You just have to use the color. And what I like about this painting, the way I did it, 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 it almost has like a vintage look to it. And I, I, I was able to, to get that effect by um, brushing around. So, so in other words, when we're done painting this, we're going to brush around the edges with some burnt umber to give it that, that vintage look. I just thought when I was painting this that that would be fun. So I'm going back and I'm putting some more white on top of that. Because remember, we want white on here more than anything. And what I'm doing, I'm, I'm barely going over top of it. Barely. I'm put some more over here. It really needs to be white up here at the top. So in our last uh, in our last tutorial, I had mentioned I promised that I would give you the name of that that American artist that we were talking about, the one who was endeavoring to try to be a success story, and he was a, he was already a success story. His name is Maxfield Parrish. Brilliant gentleman, absolutely brilliant. So I'm continuing to put, I'm doing the wet, it's, it's wet on wet, literally. I'm putting wet paint on top of wet paint. And I'm trying to, when I get, you know, when I feel like I have too much paint and it's not blending, the colors are not blending together well, I'm just going to wipe off some of the paint. I'm putting more white because I'm really trying to get that, that fill of, of a highlight here. And if for some reason it doesn't go on any, better than I want it. I'll just come back to it later, which I think I'm going to end up doing. Okay. And I'm going to kind of outline it right here. If that shows up, if not, then that's okay. We'll come back to it later. Anyway, Maxville Parrish was an American artist who, he did illustrations at first and eventually he started doing landscape paintings. But he was so determined in being this master artist and doing these master these landscape masterpieces that he was determined to not be known as an illustrator because that's what he was. But even his illustrations were beautiful. I mean, they were masterpieces within themselves. So if you get a chance, to, uh, check out um, check check him out, Maxville Parish. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to I'm going to repeat the same thing I did up there. 
but I'm going to come down. I'm going to notice my stroke. I'm trying to come down and make some kind of a kind of like a curve in a sense. I'm just coming down, trying to make that line right there. Okay. I'm going to get some more paint, some more quinacridone magenta. I hope I'm pronouncing it right because this is the way I've been pronouncing it for quite a while. And so then I'm going to come and I'm going to get some of that. I'm barely scraping over top of it, over top of the uh, quinacridone with the with the white. So that's kind of cool. So I told you this that it. it it looks difficult, but it really isn't. I think once you learn the strategies and the methods regarding uh, doing artwork, it's it's not as it's not as difficult as it seems. Put a little bit more of that white over here. So I got a piece of history information, uh, artistic history. Well, it's not even history. It's just some information that this one to share about one of my favorite artists, Bob Ross, which I'm sure he's a lot of your, a lot of your, he's probably your favorite artist too. It'll, it, this will look better when we come back and we outline it with some, like get the, um, I, I can't think of the word, the, um, the areas here, the openings where um, they need to be darker. We'll come back to that. So right now we just, I'm just, I'm just going through, and I'm literally just putting on conacridone magenta, and 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 white. That's why I said this is probably one of the easy, the easiest paintings I've done. That might look intricate, but it really is not. And you know, you know, when you practice and practice and practice, you, your hands start. You start becoming more skilled in how you put the pressure on your on your um, your paintbrush. So I just was lightly putting on some of that white, and I'm coming back to put some more of the quinacridone because this area is a little bit darker. Want to get a little bit darker. And sometimes you have to do more than one layer. And that's fine. Let's see if I can try to get some up here. Okay, so about the history information, I, you know, I I'm always trying to read something. I I, I love to read. And I, I just love to read. Anyway, um, you know, thinking about Bob Ross, you know, his teacher was was the German artist uh, William Bill Alexander. And William Bill Alexander, he was in World War II. Can you believe that? I'm thinking I came to America as a refugee, I believe, if I'm correct. And when he came here, and this will explain where the wet on wet method came from. And when he came here, he, you know, he, he was an artist. He loved to do art. When, you, when you're doing this, try to make a, try to make the strokes. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I don't, I don't want the colors to be really blended together. I just want it to, to look like it's scraped across there. It makes it look a little bit more awesome. Put some more quinacridone because it needs to be darker here. Anyway, Bill Alexander, he um he did paintings, but I guess he he realized that they took longer than he wanted to. And he I guess people wanted his paintings, so to speed up the process of you know, expedite the process of getting more product out, he practiced the wet on wet method. He realized he can get more paintings done that way. Anyway, he was um Bob Ross's instructor. And that that would totally make sense because you know you notice Bob Rossi uses the 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 wet the wet on wet method. So we're gonna go to the next part. So all I'm doing, like I said, I'm just going through and just putting quinacridone magenta and and white. Now, 
Now, if you when you're um, if you want to follow me, uh, you can follow me. I am on not only am I on YouTube, I'm on Facebook. You can follow on my Facebook page. We can talk about different topics. You can share your art on my Facebook page, my Instagram page. You can also uh, go to my website at www.kittycrowcreations.com. Create a blog, and we can talk about art topics and you know things like that. And eventually, I don't, I don't know what what um, art tutorial it'll be. I don't know if it'll be the next one or maybe the one after that. I'm probably going to be start um, raffling off my some of my paintings because I you know I have so many. I have duplicates of everything. Because what I do, I like to paint them first and then and then and then I paint them again on the tutorial. I really love this pink. Okay, so I'm going to put some over here. And I hope you had a chance to ch uh, check out my last couple of tutorials that, I, that I've done. I did, I did one of a, of a dandelion with a raindrop on it. And I also did um, an oak tree on a hill. Those were fun. And I did a, um, a yellow daisy. So I hope you, hope you have a chance to check those out. I'm just going to go ahead and make a line right here because this needs to be straight. Now, if you're a gentleman and you're a mechanic and you know all the specifics about cars, cut me some slack because I'm just, I'm just doing this as art. I'm not, I'm not proficient in all the components of a Volkswagen bus. So I'm sorry if I have insulted you in any way. I'm just having fun painting. That's all. All right. So we're gonna now we're gonna come down here. This is gonna stay white, and I'll I'll come back and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, let's let's get some more of our. This one's just gonna go straight down. The other part I was trying to curve. Like when we come over here, I'm gonna curve that. Because we're trying to keep the shape of the bus. And, you know, I, I was just thinking, um, I was telling a story about last time, uh, one of my art tutorials, how I used to have my own uh, booth at a craft store when I was in my 20s. And I used to, you know, I I made homemade uh, stuffed bunny, bunny rabbits. I would dress them up for all, like I would, I would sew them and then I would dress them all up for the different holidays. And that was so much fun. And then also I, um, and actually I'm still doing it as I did toll painting. Like I would, you know, do wood crafts and I love doing that. I'm just trying to see if I can, this needs to be darker. Put some over here, just a little white. gonna drag it. I'm trying to take some of that paint off so I can drag this. But yeah, I used to have um, my friend and I, bless her heart, she she passed away years ago of cancer. Um, we had a craft booth and a craft store, and that was so much fun. Okay, I'm going to come back up here and I'm I'm going to you there's there's a lot of light right here, so you got to put some got to put some white right right in this area. I'm just to give a sense of this highlight that there that there that exist. Now, if you if you follow my videos, you notice I kind of do the same thing. I will start off with like a background color or try to start off with a background color. And then I will put, then I will outline it with my traceable. And I know a lot of, a lot of you that go to the paint parties, which I will probably be having some paint parties soon. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to teach some of the art lessons within a short amount of time. Um, when you go to the paint parties, they don't really have you using blow dryers and things like that. They just have you do, you know, freehand everything. And that's actually a good, a good way to go. Sometimes I feel like when you outline things, it's helpful, but
but it's all it can also be considered restricting for some people they just like to be free and draw free-handed and just they just want to paint but i can tell you right now the more intricate your work is the the more you're gonna have to, the more you're gonna have to put into it I'm telling you that right now and i'm always saying that you're probably tired of me saying it but it's just the truth okay so i got that part Just gonna come back and put some just a little more. A little more of that white. And some, some more quinacridone. Because what I what I what makes what, what I felt made this this um painting look so fun is the fact that it didn't um the colors weren't really blended together. They look like they just look like I took half of this color and half that color and put it on there, and that's that's the part that I liked. So I'm just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna give a shout out to my um, my sister, the creator of fruits and fruit and carrots. She designed this ring for me. Look at this ring, isn't it gorgeous? And it matches the necklace that she made me. She's so talented. You gotta check her out. Fruit and carrots. I'm sorry, fruit and Carrots. That's K A K A R A T S. Fruit and carrots. And this will really come to life when we start putting all the other details. Right now we're just putting um I guess you can say the base color. And we can come back and add more more color to that to make a little bit look a little bit more vibrant. So I'm gonna put out some more of my connectrodone. So we're gonna need that. Yeah, if you ever get a chance, um, check out um, check out some books on the different artists, especially the artists who um, are from the past. Obviously, Van Gogh. You want to check him out. Um, and um, Caravaggio, I think that's how you say his name. Check him out. And then even some artists that you're not familiar with, check out some of their work. You'd be very impressed. You can learn a lot from them just from, you know, looking at their artwork. I think I'm always fascinated at how they were able to produce such beautiful artwork with the limited resources that they had. That's what I found fascinating. I hope you're all doing well during this during this pandemic. I stay busy. If I'm not doing artwork, I'm trying to sew something or trying to design something. I just I just stay busy. And I and I I've always been like that. I've always um I've always been creative and trying to Keep myself busy because first of all it's fun just coming back and trying to put some more of that color in there you'll see me come back again i'll probably come back again in areas that i think are too light or too dark i'll come back and put more so i'm just putting some some more of that quinacridone okay so when you're following me uh while i'm while i'm painting you can do a couple of things you can watch the whole video the, the tutorial through first and then come back and try so you can kind of get an idea of what i'm doing or you can follow along with me i know that when i first started learning how to paint i would um i would watch tutorials first and then i would then i would go back and paint them because i'm I, i'm one of those people i have to know what i need to know what the, the end product looks like and if you're one of those people then just do that watch it first okay so when i get over here I'm going to, this needs to be curved. So I'm going to curve it and then I'm going to come down. And the best way really to paint these 
are the pain, uh, say for instance, you're doing a pain that, that might seem a little bit challenging or out of your comfort zone, break it up into sections. Just break it up into sections. You see that I'm doing little sections at a time. I'm trying to paint a lot of the the main portions of the bus. Let me see, I gotta get that coming around like that. I'm gonna paint the the main parts of the bus and then I'm then I'm gonna get a lot of the details. I'm coming back, I'm gonna put that white on there like I like I've been doing. And there's certain parts over here that I can see that I really need to put some more of my um, quinacridone. I think they're a little bit too light. But honestly, it'll really start to pop when you put all the details, um, especially the, the, the burnt umber around the edges. So I'm just kind of scraping. And then I'm going to go come back and get some more quinacridone and scrape back over top of that. Does anybody have any request of any particular type of uh, type of painting they they would like to they would like to see? Let me get. I'm going to take out some Mars black. And with that Mars, I'm going to use this Mars black. So go ahead and take out your Mars black. I don't know. I have a little gnat flying on my painting. And then I'm going to take out. I think I'm going to take out some doxazine purple. I'm going to be needing those pretty soon anyway. And I'm going to give you a heads up, take out some phthalo blue. This doxazine. doxazine purple looks almost like Mars black, so be careful. And then I also want my phthalo blue. There it is. I'm going to put it over here. That's going to help us make the chrome on our tires. Net flying around. I don't know where that came from. Okay, so I got that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of that quinacridone and put a little tiny bit of, well, a little tiny bit of black. I'm going to darken it up a little bit. Get some more quinacridone. I think I want this to be a little bit darker over here. And I know I'm going to, so that's what that's what the color I use to color this, these areas, the crevices. So that's what I'm using that for. I'm going to put it right here. And then also it needs to come down here. And then some right here. Okay, so I'm just going to go up there and put... I'm just going to cover those up. Those are in my way. I think when you look at the reference photo, it's a little it's a little bit darker in the front. I hope my hand's not in the way where you can't see. But yeah, it's very helpful to that when you have a painting that you're not feeling okay with. Well, not, not that you don't feel okay with it, it's just that it's a little bit more challenging for you than usual. Just break it up into sections and don't look, don't get overwhelmed by the the whole, okay, let me see, I'm trying to, just trying to scrape across there. You know, don't get overwhelmed by the whole thing, the whole finished product of the painting. Just do a little bit at a time. Okay, I'm gonna let that. I'm probably gonna let this dry a little bit and come back over. Okay, so there, that looks like that. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna finish. 
Okay, that's the, the dark part right here, and I'm going to just go straight with some quinacridone. I'm going to keep my lines of my chrome, but like the Volkswagen bus uh, symbol and the um, the headlights and stuff, I'll probably just paint right over top of those so I can come back and freehand it. Trying to, trying to make sure I go up and down on the, this part of the bus in the front as best as I can. I went over that a little bit, but that's okay. Not really worried. Don't worry. Okay, so the line, the outline is not there to restrict you. Okay, so don't feel restricted. Don't feel that, oh my gosh, I went over the line. Yeah, don't, don't even worry about that. Now, when you're painting and you're looking at your painting, and you're saying it looks too flat. I don't know. I feel like it's missing something. You just probably need to go over it with another a coat of paint because the more, that's too much paint on there. The more that you paint, the more layers you have, the better your painting will be. Like for me, I'm probably going to go over these again. But we'll 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 figure that out. We'll figure out how much time we have because I try not to. I don't want the tutorials to be too long. Okay, see, I can still see the Volkswagen sign on there, and I don't know if I want to want to be able to see that. Okay, so coming over here, you notice I keep going to different sections. And that's what you want to do. Go over different sections as best you can. You know, thinking of, okay, so you're probably thinking, now, why does this woman like Volkswagen buses? I, ever since I, I would probably say, I don't know, tw I've ever since I was like 12 or, you know, I don't want that, I don't want this section too light. This, this, this whole front needs a little, be a little bit darker than the other the other part of the bus. Got to make sure that's coming down and not going all swiggly because it, it is, it ha does, you know, vehicles have form. You just can't be putting stuff all willy nilly. But okay, so here's the story behind me and why I like Volkswagen buses. I love old model cars. I always have. And I always promised myself when I got older. I'm mixing some more of that dark color with doxazine, I mean, uh, quinacronone magenta and, and Mars black. So try not to make it too dark. That looks, that's a little bit too dark. Just gonna wipe, I'm just going to take advantage of that black and brush it in there. Okay, so I have always loved old model cars ever since I was little. And here in the town that I live in, we um, we had a, a restaurant called um, Andre's where um, every Friday, people who had old model cars would come out and show off their old model cars. And so, of course, you know, either my sisters and I or, or my brothers and I or even some of my friends and I, we would go to the Andres. We go. We'd go out on Friday night. We go get get something to eat, and we would sit there and we would just wait to see the see the cars. And I was just like, oh my god, these cars are so awesome. And even my father had an old model car, and um, and when he would let me drive that, it had like the that like extended chrome pipes on it and stuff. And I would drive that, and I would I would would get that engine going and listen to it and make that noise. And oh my gosh, those I don't know, just old model cars are just appealing to me. And when I watch old classic movies and I see those cars, oh my gosh, I love them. Always have, always will. But to me, the Volkswagen bus is a very unique vehicle. I don't know the history behind it, and I don't know all the specifics behind it, which, of course, you know, that means I'm going to research it to find out. But I just think it's, it's just a fascinating vehicle. I really do. Okay, so we're going to take a break from using pink for right now, and we're going to switch to the tires, okay? So for the tires, I okay, so I've contaminated my white, so I'm just going to make some more white over here. 
Whenever your white is contaminated or whenever your light color is contaminated or any color contaminated. And what I mean by that is that it's, it's got other colors mixed in it and you don't have the true color. Just make another, just put out some more paint. Okay, so with the tires, we're going to start with, with white. So I'm just going to come through. I'm just going to put white that's still pink. I don't know, but anyway. Like so I'm going to make them white. And then I'm going to come back and outline them with the black to shape them. And then we're going to talk about the chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one back here too. My brush I need to clean a little bit more. It's got this pink in it. And that's okay. Okay, so while I have the white, I'm going to come back to that white in a minute. But while I have the white, I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to make these white. This is going to be my um, my chrome. And I'm trying to make the lines as straight as I can. And it also gives you an opportunity to go, go back and cover up some of that. Um, cover up some of that, uh, that pink. You didn't want the pink there because you had a chance to cover it up. Okay, so then I'm going to come down here and do this part. I might have to wait till, till that dries because it was wet over here. So I might have to wait, but let's give it a try and see. Okay, so when you look at Chrome, you're think, probably thinking to yourself, oh, I just need to take out some silver. I guess you could do that, but it's not going to look the same. So what, I, what I've done is that I'm starting with white. For my chrome, I'm starting, as you can see, I'm starting with some titanium white. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put some, believe it or not, some phthalo blue. I hope you can see that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm left-handed, so if my hand gets in, your, in, in the way. I'm really sorry about that. Let me let me see if I can get this brush cleaner. Okay, I think I got all the paint. Okay, so now I'm gonna what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a little bit of phthalo blue and I'm just gonna come along the edge and try to blend some, that's too much. And try to blend some of that in there. I'm lightly dragging over top of it. And if I think it's too much, I'll just come back and put some more white, which I need to put some in there. Because putting this phthalo blue is going to give it the illusion of chrome. I, it's hard to explain, but if you look at my painting, when you look at that, you probably think that, oh, that looks like chrome, but it's just, a, it's just I'm playing around with colors. I'm putting phthalo blue to mix with some against the white to make it look like chrome. And see how see see how it's starting to look? Let me get a little bit more up here. Just put it on there lightly. You, you don't want it too heavy. You just want it to like almost like dry brushing. And that's what I that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to dry brush it. Just, just do, I'm just doing it along the uh, along the bottom edge. I'm not doing it on the top. I'm just doing it along the bottom. And if I see a harsh line, of course I want to clean it up. Take off some of the paint and try to try to blend blend that so it's not so harsh. But um I don't know if you if you if you all had a chance to you you got to check out Stefan Bauman, Stefan Bauman's uh, YouTube channel, and he's actually fun to watch. I mean, he doesn't really teach you lessons, but he gives you a lot of information. And Stefan Bauman, if you if, for those who don't know who he is, he used to have an art art um a program called the um I think the Grand View on the 
um, the public, the Valley Public Channel. And he does um, plain air paintings, specifically plain, plain air. I mean, I mean his paintings, they're, they are like over the top amazing. Anyway, he has a YouTube channel. And I like watching him because what he does, he gives, he, I think he teaches classes up north. I think in Shasta County, I think. As a matter of fact, I hope one day to go to one of his retreats and, and be enlightened by his skills. But anyway, I, I like to see the um, homework assignments he gives his students. And one of them is that they had to paint, I think, tin foil a Reynolds wrap or something. And it was cool. I mean, it's cool to like look at their paintings. And I think some of them talked about how challenging it was. Can you, can you imagine trying to, to paint tin foil and, and, and try to make something look like foil? That, that I really like, you know what? He's actually smart in giving a lesson like that because what he, what, what I like about him, what he does, he makes his students actually at first, I'm thinking, why, why would you put tin foil? But what he does, he makes the students actually analyze what they're viewing, and and because when you do that, what did he say? He said, um, I think, and it's so true, is that when when you're doing, and I hope I hope I get this right. If I don't, forgive me, Stephen Bauman. But when you are painting, you're actually trying to show lights and darks and i think we've talked about that because when people look at your art they see the finished product but when you're playing around with your lights and darks and you play around with them correctly that gives the illusion of a realism and so that's what you that's your your focus so like right now even with me in this quinacridone magenta i'm playing around with the white and trying to make it look like it's 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 chrome So right now I'm just kind of I'm 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 using a little bit of this. I'm just dry brushing it. Just dry brushing it on here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bit more white on that to make sure it's blended well. A lot of times what I'll do is that if I have a color and it's too strong, I will come back over it with another color. With the other color, like white, I'll, I'll just like go back over, like I need to go back over that. And then I'll clean off my brush and I'll just like dry brush it together so they'll blend together. And I'm going to put a little bit more. They look, look, you see me? I'm just barely getting it. I hope you can see that on the camera. Can you see it? I'm just barely getting it on the tip of my, of my brush. I just barely want to get a little bit of that phthalo blue in there. Okay. So that's that part. So now what I'm going to do for this, since we're on it, remember I talked about working in sections. I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off. Okay. So the top part I want to outline, I want to outline this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, um, I'm going to take some, some doxazine purple, a little bit of Mars black. It's a teeny bit. You see me, I'm getting it on the tip of my brush and maybe just a teeny bit of quinacridone. Let me just get a little bit more. Because we don't want it, we don't want to be too far away from the color. But I'm I'm going to create a shadow, like I can tell right now that's too dark. Yeah, that's better. Something like that. Let me see if it's too dark. I just want to go in here and create a shadow. That's actually perfect. So I'm just barely trying to. That's why I love using love using this um, angle brush. It has that chis chiseled edge to it. So I'm just going underneath, creating a shadow. And um, one of the things that Stefan Bauman would do is that when he has students do their artwork, okay, and I love when he says this, he'll, when he he go over the artwork. And you know what? Even when he was critiquing, he kind of did it with love. It wasn't it wasn't like offensive, but he was very he's very honest. He's very honest. But first thing he'll tell them when when, when he talks about the artwork, he'll say, "So what were you thinking?" 
And he's got a good point because you're going to create create art. What what was your point? What were you trying to do? You know, that's something I'm work. I got to work on, and I don't do that. When you're creating your art, what 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 was your focus? What what are you trying to get your viewers to see? What is the point? What is your focal point? And some of the students would tell him, and he'll say, "I don't see that." I'm like, "Wow." So that's a good point. So when you're painting, I'm just I'm just going back and trying to blend that color in so it's not so harsh. And I'm going to do it on the top also. I'm going to put a little bit of water on there. Let's see if I can use some more of this paint. So it's just an outline. But that's something to think about. What were you thinking when you were doing your artwork? What was your what was your point? What was your goal? And to have him say, I don't see that. That makes you really think about your art. Like, and if you're one of those people who just draw art, you know, it's just fine. I don't really care what people think. I'm just doing art. You know, so be it. That's fine. That's 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 great. But for me, personally, I am always trying to figure out the best way that I can do something the correct way. I'm, do, I'm putting some more doxes, I mean, some more uh, quinacridone magenta, and I'm going to put a little bit more purple. Maybe it's a little bit more, teeny, teeny bit, teeny bit of the black, because, you know, black, the, the Mars black is strong. I just need, really need for that to be dark and not so purpley. A little bit more Mars black. You see how this is coming alive because we're, we're starting to put dark colors in. I'm just going to put some more there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and put the line. The, I'm going to use Mars Black to create the line, the separation in this. And you'll see how it's going to look. So I'm just going to go through line to divide this and they'll look like chrome first stage is a chrome I'm trying to get my line as straight as I can get it okay so that's that part More than likely, I'm probably going to come do some more something else over here because that looks too, that looks too, too white right there. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Let's go back to our, let's go back to our, um, to our uh, tires. So our tires, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and get some black and we're going to start outlining them. Okay. All right. So we want to shape them. And all this back here is black. Now, when I'm doing my tire, if I feel like it looks weird and I want to shape it some more, I can take some of this antique white and just come back over it with the antique white and shape and shape it. Okay, so I'm doing this, just kind of trying to shape it out. So from this part, I'm actually going to, I'm going to try to use the black to help me shape this. It's going around. And then we've got the front tire, the front part. It's kind of coming like a, like that. That's not circular enough for me, so I'm gonna use this part of the brush. not not a circle not the way I want it to be just gotta now I feel like that's that's definitely it needs to be the white needs to come more more this way. So I'm going to put a little bit of white. This actually, this actually needs to be a little bit darker. I 
there. So this needs to be And this down here needs to be more white. But speaking of white, I'm going to put a little white here so it so we can see a division and see that there's a tire trying to. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to overpower power it too much. Okay, so let's send that in a little. When this dries, I'll put some more white down there because right now it's just too. Um, that's not what I was shooting for. Okay, so let's go ahead and start working. I'm going to put some more white in the middle of this because it's already dried. Let's see, my white looks like it's gotten a little bit contaminated. Let me see if it'll let me come out some more. No. It's still kind of wet, but let me... still needs to be. Sometimes when and your your angle brush, you just probably have to use the tip of it. Okay, so that's looking better. So much better. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to, while that's uh, wet, I want to get some of my phthalo blue and just I want to outline that because that's going to be help me with the shape of my rim. Try my best to keep it as circular as possible. But yeah, if you get a chance, check out, you gotta check out Stefan Bauman. He's a crack up. He really is. I used to love to watch him on Valley uh, Public Television too, to see him go out to the um, national parks in the United States and just go out there and just, um, and just plain air paint. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a crack up. Anyway, so I'm, I'm cleaning out my brush and I'm drying it off and I want to go through and I want to blend that, that phthalo blue in with the white. I don't know how we're doing on time. But. Okay, so now we're going to make, now we're going to make the, um, the, the, um, the, I guess the spokes, whatever they're called. I can tell I don't know much about vehicles. I want one of the buses, but I don't know anything about the, the parts of it. Okay, so we're going to kind of try to outline the shape of the, um, the chrome here. I'm going to start with some phthalo blue. And I'm going to try to come out here. You know, I might have to switch to my little tiny one because this one's getting too... I need to make it smaller. I need more control of what's going on. So I just switched to my one fourth inch um, angle brush. Okay, so we got, we're trying to shape it. I'm gonna put some right here. And just, just shape them the best way you can. They look like triangles. Now, like I said, I mean, it's, it's, this is not a perfect, this is not the ideal scenario of really what a, what a bus looks like as far as tires go, but we're going to try to make it work. Okay, so we got the blue on top. We're going to be putting white in that in just a minute. In mine, I had, let me see, I'm going to put another one over here. sure how many they're supposed to be. 
my other one, I, I don't think I put enough of these on here, but I'm just going to put more. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of white on top of those. Try to dry brush some white on top of them. They don't look so blue. And that's what I was saying that when you're when you're when you're painting something, I'm gonna make that come out a little bit further. Make this look more triangular shaped. Okay, so when um so that white on that dark really makes it stand out. Put some white, more white there, white there. I know this sounds insane. We're going to, um, did I get my thalo? Yeah, here it is, thalo green. Give me a little bit of thalo green. Put a little bit of thalo green in there. Just a little bit. We're going to put it right in the middle. We need to put some white on it. I'm going to brush a little. Put some, try to make that not look so. Okay, so now we need to make these look um, dimensional. So the first, the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to put some black in between them. So I'm put black in between this one. Put black in between this one. Block somewhere up here in between this one too. If I can get it in here. And remember, we're always trying to make an, the illusion of something. Okay, so we've got the black in here. So now we need to make the other parts look dimensional. So what we need to do is for sure we need to put a little bit of gray, a little gray in here. So I'm going to keep that black, put some white on there. I'm going to try to dry brush it gray in here. Take that off. Dry brush it. Put some more white. Try to keep, try to keep the shape. Just wiping, I'm just wiping it off as if I feel like I have too much paint. Let me put a little bit more of that, that color in here. I, I know, you know, I, I know sometimes it's kind of complicated. You know, I uh, you're trying to find a form. I just went back and got a little bit more black. Let me shape this. I'm going to wipe some of it off. You got to get that gray in between in there to um you don't want it to look too let me see if I can get some gray right here Some more white. That was a little bit of the gray. I'm going to try to put some more of the white in there and then put some more of the black. Not too much though. But you've got to get that gray in there for sure. And then put a little bit of the black in there too. And then I'm just going to go ahead and dry brush it. I'm going to 
scraping just a dry brush. Because what's happening to these chromes, these spokes, chrome, whatever, they're trying to catch the reflection of what's around it. Definitely reflection from the tire. I'm just going to lightly dry brush down here so it looks like the tire. So, you know what? This can stand a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit of white in between these two. A little bit more dimension. I'm just putting a white line in between them. Give it more dimension. Okay. I will tell you. That sometimes when you're painting things, and I'll always tell you this, when it looks off, walk away from it and come back. I'm just, I'm just going to put some more white on that, on that so it'll look like it's got a highlight of some sort. Okay, let's go back here and do the next tire. Then we already got our white. Let's get our black. And we're just going to come through. We're going to try to shape it. All I can tell you to do is to take your time. So, see, I'm using this tip right here. You see it? This tip, this part. It's. I feel like it's easier to make the the circle than just trying to use the chisel, the chisel edge part. And it's kind of tricky. These tires are kind of tricky. I'd probably say the toughest part of, of this whole, um, the whole uh, tutorial or the lesson is for you to make the tires. It's probably the, the hardest part. Or it might be the easiest part for you. Who knows? Getting some more black. Gotta shape it. I'm trying to shape it a little bit here. Shape this. But you know, it never amazes me. Um, but it would actually, it does, it does actually amaze me. But the fact that um, I have to come back and put some more white on that. The fact that how I can paint, do a painting twice. And each time, even if I were to do this a third time, it would come out different. It would come out differently. I mean, they still come out nice, but I'm just saying they're going to come out differently. I'm just going back and putting some white in here to reshape that tire. Okay. I'm just going to put a little bit of white on the back of this tire. And I want to put a little bit, a little bit more over here, just a little. Just barely, I, I barely touched it. I barely touched it. Now I'm gonna try to wipe it off, and I'm just gonna kind of come and scrape it. And if I think that that's showing up too much, I'll just, I don't actually, I actually like that. That's, I like that. I just, I was just dry brushing it. That's all I was doing. Okay, so now we need to come here and make. Um, make the parts of this tire the the the, the, the rims okay, first thing we need to do we need to when we do this chrome we need to outline it with some um with some phthalo blue around the edge there's something about that phthalo blue that gives it the um it gives it the appearance of of, of chrome i know i keep saying that but it's the truth For me personally, because when I when I was when I was doing the the painting, 
when I do a painting, I sit there and I analyze it to death. I look at them like, I'll sit there, like maybe for even like, I don't know, 20 minutes and just look at the colors. Sometimes I'll close one eye and leave one eye open and I'll just sit there and try to look. I'm like, okay, so what is it that you're actually seeing here, Katisha? Don't look at the finished product. What What is it that you're seeing in this painting? Okay, so I'm going I'm to... I'm do something a little bit different that I didn't do in the last one. I'm just going to go ahead and start with my mix some um, mix some white and the the Mars black. I'm going to dry off a little, dry off my brush, and I'm going to come here and I'm going to put some gray. Dry it off. And I'm just going to scrape. If I feel like it's too, the gray is too much, I'm going to put some, put some more white. Put even more white. Just barely going over the top of it. Because it has to have like that shadow effect. And I'm going to come take some Mars Black. And at this time I'm, going to, I'm just going to shape the... Um, shape the rims. This, one, this one's kind of shaped kind of weird. This opening. But I'm just going to shape it the way it's supposed to be. They're just kind of like little triangles. This one. Okay, and then we're gonna put a little bl bit of um, a blue around around those. A little bit of blue. And I'll do the this one over here. I'm just doing it in reverse order though, and then some white. A little bit of that white just scraping over top of it. I think I lose the blue. Let's go get a little bit more of it. Put it back in there. I feel like I need a lot of blue right there. And then I'm just going to throw in a little bit of phthalo green because for some reason it's, um, there's something around this painting or this picture that's got some green in it. And that's why it's got that little touch of green. Okay, so those are my tires. I'll probably come back and do something else to them. I don't know. But let's go ahead and finish working on the, the rest of this, okay? Let's, like I said, that the this is probably going to be your hardest part is just you doing the um, doing the tires, trying to get that chrome look. While, while I'm thinking of chrome, let's go ahead before I do the windows, the windshields, let's go ahead and paint the um, the mirrors and the lights. And then we can work on uh, the um, the, win the windshields, this, the opening here, and then the, the bumpers. So same same scenario. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Watch what we're gonna do on this one. This is the the uh, the uh, the rear view mirrors. This is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna try to make a perfect circle going around. I'm only gonna do I'm gonna do them one at a time because I'm trying to remind you to focus on one area at a time. So. I made my circle as perfect as I can get it. Okay, now I'm, of course, I'm going to get some phthalo blue, right? And put that at the bottom. And if you remember when I did, uh, when I did my uh, dandelion wood uh, raindrops, I had phthalo blue in there. Remember? So if you're trying to make something look translucent or transparent, 
Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna do something different. This is almost exactly like it was when I did the, the raindrops. I'm gonna put some doxazine purple. Right above that. Excuse my, excuse the interruption, my phone's ringing. Okay, I'm gonna pause this for a second. Okay, so you have the phthalo blue and the doxazine purple. And then what I did, I wiped off some of my brush and now I'm just dry, dry brushing it together. That's all I'm doing. Okay, I'm gonna go back and pull a little bit more white. Wipe off my brush and try to blend some of that back in there. Perfect. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some white to make the handle. Let me get the white to make the handle. It's going to come right here. And what do you think I'm going to put in it? You're right, some phthalo blue. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much. Let me clean some of that off. Put some more white. Because if you just if you look at a, a look at a picture and you try to paint it based on what you think you see instead of analyzing what in fact you are seeing. It may not come out the way you want it, or it might it might come out the way you want it. But if you want to, if you're going to paint something right, make sure you analyze every aspect of it. Okay, so make sure you do that. All right. So next thing we're going to do, we are going to come over here and do this one the same way. Start with some white. And if you are okay, so the paint you can see I'm I'm using golden. I like golden. And I also use uh, Matisse. Let me just kind of shape this out. And the thing I like about these paints, I'm not saying go out and spend a whole bunch of money on paints. Just you know, use what you can. If you don't have the money, buy what you can and just make some adjustments. Uh, what I like about these paints. Is that they they're they're um they're very opaque and they have good really good pigment and they go on so well. Like if I were to do this with with another paint that wasn't um professional professional grade paint, I would probably have to put that on a couple of times and even then it probably you would probably still be able to see the background through it. That's the that's the only problem with using student paints. You can use them. Like I said, I've done uh, the, my first 50 paintings were with just student level paints and I was happy with what I had. OK, so I'm coming in and put my doxazine purple. I think I feel like I went out too far on my um, on my outline right there. So I'm just I'll come back and clean that up with some, some antique white. So I'm going to brush that in. I cleaned off my brush. You really don't have to rinse your, your brush in the water. You can just clean it off on your on your towel or whatever you have. Because you, you can use a towel or paper. You should always have a towel or paper towels near you when you're painting. Because you're constantly going to be cleaning stuff. Okay, now I'm going to get my, my doxazine purple. And I'm trying to just go over this lightly, everybody. I'm just trying to go over it lightly. And then just blending them all together. And if I feel like that's not, feel like I lost my white, I'm gonna come back and put some more in. And I learned this from Ginger Cook wherever there's a light, there's a dark. Okay, so I'm just trying to put some more white on that. Perfect. 
So now I'm going to put the handle on this one. I'm going to go ahead and get out my... Okay, thinking of... Um, speaking of this, the um, student level paint, that's what I'm taking out. That's, that's what I put on the background. That's what I put on the background of my painting. And that's what I'm using right now. I'm going to go... I'm going to get some of that antique white. I'm going to come and clean this up. edges up. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to get my white. I'm going to make the handle. Now, if you look at that, you're like, I can't see that. I'm like, exactly. That's why you got to kind of put some, put some thalo blue or something in there to Wherever there's a light, you got to put a dark. Okay. And then we'll outline it in a minute with some, um, with that doxazine purple, Mars black, and quinacridone magenta mixture. Okay. So, so let me get my liner. It's my liner brush. I'm not even sure if I want to use it. Yeah, I think this one will work. So I'm going to get some anacrodone magenta. My paint's starting to dry out because I have these big old lights all over the place. So anacrodone magenta, doxazine purple. I want to put more doxazine purple than, I mean, uh, anacrodone magenta more than anything. Just a little bit of black, a little bit. may have overpowered it a little bit. I'm just putting water to thin it out because I am going to use it as a liner. So I just want to come through and lightly outline it. Because if I don't, if I don't outline it, it's not, it's probably not going to show up. I'm just trying to put a little thin line around it. Okay. Do this down here the same way. Put a little bit of line, outline. I'm going to come over and do this on the same. Take your time because you don't want to mess up all your beautiful work by putting a big old thick, thick outline. You just barely want to. And technically, you don't even have to go all the way around it. Even if you just go around parts of it, it's fine because you just want it to want to be able to see it. OK, so. We're going to paint this part right here. That's all black. So I'm going to paint it black. I can go back to my. Um, and go back to my, I think that's my five eighths inch. No, my half inch, my half inch angle brush. I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna put out some more Mars black because my Mars black is looking sad. It's all clumped up. Put some fresh Mars black right there. And then I'm also gonna put some more Macrodon magenta. Connectrodome, which is a little bit old, so it looks kind of clumpy too. Okay, so I'm gonna. This right here tells me that the windows are open. Okay, so this is an opening of the window, so I'm just painting that. If I was smart, I should have done a sunroof, that would have been cool. I'm trying to take my time to go around. My um, my mind's going blank for what these are called. Well, my mirrors. Okay. So we got that, and since I have the black, I'm gonna come over here. And th this is black also because the um, 
either this particular model had these like shades on the front or this is um the the top of the um the bust is casting a shadow whatever the case may be this needs to be black and you can see how this is all starting to come together Let me get some more black. I hope you all give this a try and I mean, try to paint it with different colors. Um, I mean, you don't have to paint the bus with different colors, although you could, you can make it a multicolored um, colored bus. That would be cool. But just like maybe if you don't want to make it pink, you can make it blue, you can make it green, you can make it black. Make whatever color you want. And art is fun. Never forget. Um, and it's very therapeutic. Keeps you from getting bored as well. Okay, so we got our black there. And what we're going to do now, we are going to swing on over to... Let's finish painting. We need to finish painting this business right here. We need to finish painting that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That needs to... That's... That is... Acrodo magenta as well. So let me go ahead and get that painted. I'll get some of that. And this paint. I could easily mix the Conacrodo magenta and the white on my on my palette and make it make it pink. But I don't want to do that. I like the I like mixing it on the on this particular uh, painting because it gives it a special effect that I that I really really that I really really like. So. I'm telling you, these these angle brushes are are phenomenal. How that you can um. You can use like the sides of them. You don't want to do the use the front of them. See, I came back and put some more pernacridon on this one. Okay, these are supposed to be. Yeah, I like that the marbly effect of the um, quinacridone and the white. That's what I love. So now I don't know which white to use. I put out some new white, and it's, it's already drying out more so than the other white I had. Let's see, let's keep that in there. And this is going to be um, the windshield wiper, so we're not going to spend too much time. So now we're gonna do the we're gonna do the um the windshields. Okay, the windshields are rather rather unique. I'm gonna take out a little bit of cad yellow. I think I might need that. First thing I'm going to do for my first window, I'm going to mix up some white and some Mars black. Not too much Mars black. More white than that. And I'm just going to come through and I'm going to just, I'm just going to start painting it with this gray looking color. Oh, I know I was going to talk about earlier about um, painting in general. I know, like for me, when I've gone on my artistic journey, I'm always looking for the perfect format, the perfect way to paint, like step by step. Is there is there a painting, like a method out there where step by step, it tells you what to do every step of the way. And having watched different master artists and learned from, you know, different people, some have step by step methods, but for me, I found out that that's restricting. It, it restricts me as an artist, and I'm, I'm gonna get some more titanium white. And it might 
It might restrict you too, and you might not like it. For some, it works. And, you know, uh, to sum it all up, I heard an artist, This, this, she's an oil painter. I mean, she paints senators. Her oil paintings are like, if, if you want her, to, if you want her to paint, do a paint, like a portrait painting of you, excuse me, I have to get the cap. A, um, a, a oil painting of you, a portrait, it's going to cost you $6,000. I think that's the minimum. But if you saw her paintings, you would know why. You know, I mean, her stuff, I mean, the likeness is just phenomenal. Okay, so I've got my gray on there. What I want to do, I want to take some quinacridone and a little bit of yellow. More yellow. I want to put some of that gray in it. Like a pinkish, orange looking color. And then I'm going to put some more white. And then I'm just going to scrape that over top. Oop, I didn't mean to go over my black. Scraping that over the top. And I need, I know what I need. I need some cad red. I need some cad red. A little cad red, right? It's a little bit, a little bit of cad red. All the colors will be in the description anyway. So you'll, you'll, I'm not putting all my paints out at once, but you'll see them because I'm going to put them in the, they'll be in the description. I need, what I need is some cad red and some of this yellow because I need to have like an orange looking color in the background back here. And so I'm just barely scraping it. Okay. Barely. So now we're going to come over. I'll, I'll go back and clean that up in a second. I'm going to put a little bit. I'm just going to put a little bit of white. A little bit. I'm just going to mix it on here. Just a little white. And you can, like you can barely see the white, barely. And that's exactly what I want. Barely. Now we're gonna do the same thing over here on this side, but actually we're gonna we're gonna start off with more of this color, not the orange color. Sorry. Is it struggling? The paint struggling to go on. Get some more. So I got that orange. I got red, yellow. Now I'm gonna put some conacridone. A little bit more yellow. There we go. And then some white. And I don't want that much paint on my brush. I kind of want to dry brush it. I need to put some, I think I'm going to put some more red in that. Try to put some, try to put a little bit more quinacridone. There we go. I'm just gonna put a little touch of Mars black, just a, just a, a little teeny bit to gray it back, because that's the, the color I really want. That's the color I want, like a grayish pink looking color. And on the edge over here. See, what I was saying that when you're painting, you, you probably would have thought, like, how would you paint this glass? You just, you have to look at the colors. So I'm get some white. I'm just gonna go over top of it with the white. More white. Because after all, it's supposed to be a windshield. But if you think about a windshield, what is a windshield? You, it's, it's, it's a piece of material that you can see things through, right? So whatever's inside of this bus, these colors are starting, starting to project through it. So I'm just covered over here, so I'm just cover some more white. So 
some more white over here. But you see how I cast that shadow? That shadow, that shadow that's casting really, really, really makes the um makes the mirror the uh, windshield stand out. Let me go back and put some of that in there. I'm drawing off my brush because a lot of times I, I just I want to go and blend these in, blend that in. There we go. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go back and redo the um I need to redo these. They lost their shape. Now what I will do is come put some of that gray underneath that. I'm gonna mix some gray. Some we're almost done. Some gray, I mean some Mars black and some. I want it more on the white side. Actually, I want it on the darker side. I'm going to wipe some of that off because I don't want it to, because I just want it to go under here. I should have waited for that to dry, but that's okay. We'll blend it together. So by having that, that gray shadow right there, it really makes it look like it's an overcast fill. Okay, so drying that off, and then I gotta brush it in. I'm just trying to blend it in, but that wasn't dry, so just wipe it off. And if it gets in the way, come back and find some of my, my other mixture that's that's all dried up. You can't use that; it's all dried up. We'll camouflage it with some white, just a little bit of white, barely. There. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we're supposed to give an illusion of like those little things that hang from the windshield, the little fluffy things. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start off with some white. We have um, we have like two blue ones and a couple of pink ones. So I'm going to start off with some white, like make a white circle. Make another white circle over top of it. I'm losing control with that. Let me use my smaller one. white circle and put some thalo blue in it. Let's see, wipe some of that off and try to blend it in because it's really supposed to look like it's like a shadow version of it. Some more white. But anyway, I was saying that um, I know we're all looking for the perfect formula to make the perfect paintings with the best step-by-step -step process. But that artist, the one, I, oh my goodness, I can't remember her name. I read, I, I think I had one of her books and I read one of her books. She said that, and you know what? At first I'm like, I don't agree with her. But then now I agree with her. She said that there she said there is no specific formula for you to fall to be a great artist. You just have to paint, do research about art in general, like color theory, things like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be that technical unless you're really serious about learning how to paint, you know, color theory. Look at some of the 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 um the older artists like from the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, and so forth. Learn from them and just go for it and have fun. Sorry, 
I'm gonna clean this up really fast. I'm getting like little blotches all over the place. Okay, I gotta hurry up. I'm 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 making this longer than I wanted it to be. Okay, so but anyway, if you're looking for the perfect formula, I'm sorry it doesn't exist. I'm just gonna take out some burnt sienna because we're gonna need it in a minute. Let me do the other little, little, okay, so we're going to take some conacridone and we're going to put some right here. I'm just putting a little bit and then we're going to put, I think that's all we're going to put, conacridone. And then we're going to put some white in it. Just kind of go around it lightly. And, you know, I, I, I really wish you could be here and, and, and kind of feel the motion of my hand because I'm barely scraping over it. I'm just barely going over top of that. Remember, I was telling you that a lot. I feel like the lot, a lot of the great artists, they have really good control of their brush or whatever tool they're using. It could be a brush. It could be a palette knife. They really have good control over it, and that's why they're able to um, make such good art. I'm going to come over here and make some white circles, just like can barely see them. Make one over here too. Hopefully it'll show up. I'm just going to dry brush it on there. A circle. Make a circle right here. A little bit more white. Okay, now I'm just going to come through and make a couple of streaks of some macadon. There. Okay. That's done. Doesn't that look cool? Looks cool. Okay, let me make my windshields. We're gonna start off with some white. Not my windshields, but my windshield wipers. We're gonna make some white. Like draw a line there. Just draw a line. Just get like an impression of it. Draw another one right there. And what's interesting about this is that we're gonna put some burnt umber underneath it. I know that sounds nuts, but we're going to put some, I'm just taking out a little bit because when we use the spur number, we don't have to put a whole bunch. A little burn number. Actually, I'm going off my brush. So it's not always about trying to make it like super refined, but just giving the impression that something is there. White over top of that. I do want it to have a shape to it, so I'm just going to put a little shape on the end of it here, end of it there, end of it here, end of it here. I'm trying to make them look like this. And put, I'm going to put some burn number underneath that. This one underneath. Okay. All right. And also, what I like to do, let's see, that's not cool. I have my water bucket like right up. Next time, I'll put my water bucket over in a different spot. That's what it's doing is messing up my paint. Okay. So, I'm going to put some of that burnt umber underneath here put some on the side and then i'm going to put some white I'm going to grab me some white and I'm going to put some around here, so I'm just barely tapping it, so it look like it's the, the outer part of the window. Barely tapping. I'm going to put a little bit here. And you see, my hand is kind of kind of shaky, and it's moving like it's not it's not like a straight line. I want that. I don't want it to be like super perfect. Okay, so that we got that. And I'm going to put a little of that white right here. And then I think, I think 
that's good so far. Okay, so we need to come over and put white around this, around the windshield. So I'm inside here. So I'm inside this part and around here. And then also we're going to put some, some black around it to just kind of like outline it. Isn't that coming along really great? Isn't that cool? Some black right here. So if you're a person that's just, you know, not interested in mastering, you know, art concepts or anything like that. You just want to paint to have fun. Just do that. That's really what I'm doing. I'm just painting to have fun. It's just that I'm one of those painters. I like to, I like to have a lot of detail in my paintings. I just do. Okay. So we're going to put a couple of little lines over here that the, I guess these are the vents to the, to the Volkswagen bus. So let me put, there's, I don't, I don't know the exact amount. So I'm just going to go put them randomly. How many do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and nine. And like I said, I know there's some 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 automobile connoisseurs who know a lot about Volkswagen buses, and they're probably thinking, "That's not how you make the bus." Well, that's how I'm making my bus. It didn't have to be perfect, but if I'm gonna do it, I want it to I want it to look right. All right, so and then you're gonna put a little white on the tip of that. Remember, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. I'm just kind of scraping over top of it. There. All right, so I had taken on some burnt sienna, and there's a reason for that. I guess the burnt sienna. Sienna, you know, before I do that, I need to make the handles. Let me let me just go ahead and make the handles and do this part and then do the, the, the logo and then we'll come back and put the little details. So I'm just gonna first of all, here's the one of the doors. I'm just gonna outline it so we can see it. I'm just gonna highlight that in white too so we can see it. Okay, here's my first handle. my next handle. Okay. Then I'm going to do my usual because it's supposed to be chrome. I'm going to add my phthalo blue. And this time I'm going to put some doxazine purple on top of it. And I think I'm going to put some burn number underneath it so you can see the handle. And I put a little bit more white on the top because I felt like I lost the white in this. So I'm put a little bit on the top. And you I'm going to put some doxazine purple and quinacridone like around like a circle around that. So it looks like it. I may have put that circle on the wrong side, but anyway. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do this part, and I'm going to do the, the um, I'm going to do the bumper, and then the sign, the the lights, and and then put the burnt umber around it, and we'll be finished. Okay, back to my white. I have to use my bigger brush. Use my bigger brush. OK, 
Okay, we need to put some white right here because this is there's chrome right here. So we're gonna put white. Make it about this thick. My phthalo. Clean off that brush. And then I'm just going to dry brush the, the rest of the phthalo on there. Then I'm going to use Mars Black. Put a line down the middle. Probably could have waited for that. I'll let that dry a little bit more and I'll come back and try to put the black line again. Okay, so now we're going to switch back to our, our purple. We're going to, not purple, but our, our doxazine purple and our white. So we're going to put some back here. I'm using the, edge, the tip of my angle brush. I'm going to get some white. Like that. And the dog's doing purple on it. I didn't mean to put that much. But it's coming out really good, everybody. What do you think? I hope you're, you're able to paint it. Get some white to match it up. But yeah, back to the concept of finding the, the perfect formula to paint. I, I really wish I had an answer for you, but there really is not one. That's the problem. Cool. Now we're going to do, so now we got to do this part. That's pink. I hope I did not go over two hours. If I did, I apologize, but we're having fun. Well, at least I hope you're having fun. So I'm just putting the pink right here. Straight and get some white. Awesome. Okay, now we're going to do the front. Before I do that, I want to do this, this part right here. This is easy peasy. This is just all black. And then I put, you can write whatever you want to put in. You, your license plate can say whatever. I put Jesus on mine because I just thought that was so awesome. I like to put Jesus on as much stuff as, as I can get. I think one of my first paintings I made um, was an old rusty pickup truck that I did with the art Sherpa, one of her, her paintings. And I put Jesus on that license plate too. I'm just gonna put a little bit of white in the inside so that it'll look like it's kind of aged a little. I'm just kind of dry brushing, dry brushing it in there. Maybe a little bit more. Accidentally picked up water. Didn't want to do that. I don't know what it is with me in the water today. But anyway, I just want to dry brush that in there. Just a little bit. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my liner brush and I'm going to outline the, out part, the, the outer part with white. What's supposed to be white, but my white's having a tough time today. It's contaminated with all kinds of stuff. Just trying to draw the straight line. Straight as we can get it. Now, like I said, when you're, when you're doing these types of paintings, you know, watch it. 
once and then come back and try to paint it. Or when you're painting it, you can watch it and then um, I'm going to clean that off and see if I can. I'm going to try to dry brush some of that on there. Yeah, that's to me, I like that better. I don't like those harsh lines. So I'm just kind of like the, the white's already wet, so I'm just going through and just trying to scrape it in. So to give it like a, a more a more worn look or aged look. Some that off. Okay. So awesome. So now we're gonna come do the bumper and we're gonna do the um do the lights and we will be done. And then we got it. My favorite part is that we have to come back and do the burnt umber all around this. You'll see how it's gonna give it like that aged worn look, which I love. I'm just going to go ahead and use this. Okay, so we are going to start off by making this, um, starting off with our cornacridone. But um, back to that topic about finding, this kind of ties into what we were talking about last time in my last tutorial about finding your own your own approach, your own style. You've got to be yourself, plain and simple. And I and I can tell you that from personal experience because I was always trying to follow this artist and that artist. And one day I said, you know what? You've been painting yourself for a while. Why don't you just follow yourself and do what you like to do? And I and I did. Okay, so I'm just putting Cornacridone. I'm going to get some white. I'm trying, to, trying not to put too much on there. I really want to kind of do it this way because it's just dry brushing it, just dragging that white on there because we're going to put white over top of it anyway. And I was saying that um, people want to know how they can become a better artist. I used to, the exact same questions that you're asking yourself or asking others or the questions you're pondering are some of the same ones I had. You just have to start going on the journey and then learn and figure out what it is you want to do and what is going to be your approach or your method. Okay, so I got that. So now I'm going to put on just some straight white. And this is going to be the bumper for the front. I'm going to make one right here. It's probably not dry enough. I might have to come back and do that because I don't think it's dry enough. Yeah, it might work. That's what I like about these paints. I keep talk, bragging about them, but if this was a different paint there's no way I could have done this putting that white over top of that because I want this just to be all white so then after you have that we're going to put our quinacridone magenta I mean our uh, thalo blue put my thalo blue There's one of my favorite artists. Um, oh my gosh, she's like amazing. Angela Anderson. I've watched some of her paintings, her tutorials, or even have done some. And some of her stuff is like two and three hours long. But you know what? It doesn't bother me because the, the skills I learned from her was worth it. And if you ever get a chance to check her out and watch her artwork, you'll see why her stuff is two and three hours long. The, the product is phenomenal. Okay, I'm just coming, I'm just cleaning off my brush and I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna clean it. I'm just gonna kind of like brush this in as best I can. And do this one the same. See how it look, see when I say dry brush, you see how it doesn't have that harsh edge? That's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. Okay. 
So now we're just going to go put some black in the middle of it, some Mars black. So I'm going to put some Mars black. And if you feel like you lost a lot of your white, go back and put some more in there. Because that's what I'm going to do, because I feel like I lost a lot of it. So let me put some of my the white on the top, because I feel like I lost it. Right. Okay, so we're almost done. Here we go. So I'm gonna do the the uh, headlights. Make the first big one was right about right here. Try to make the best of a circle as I possibly can. Freehanding the circles are not always the easiest. Let me just start doing that and then I'll just shape it. That's probably best. Okay, so I'm just I'm shaping it as I'm as I'm painting it in. You know, yeah, oh that's not cool. I was just thinking about painting and how fun it is and how therapeutic it is. I remember when I was in high school, one of my best friends, her name, her name was, was is Bambi. And, you know, she had to move out of town and we went to the same high school, but then she had to move out of town and, you know, we were really good friends. And so the way we stayed in contact with each other, can you believe it? We wrote each other letters. I don't even know who does that anymore. We would write each other letters, but we both would, we both had our favorite superheroes. So she likes, I think she likes Spider-Man and I liked Iceman. So what we would do is we'd write each other letters and we'd draw our favorite superhero on the, on the, on the outside of the letter doing some kind of action or something. Or, or sometimes we, we'd also draw a picture of him inside of the letter. And man, those were the good old days. Just so I'm gonna get some I'm gonna get some thalo blue. And I'm just gonna come around the edge of this. That's probably way too much, but that's okay. We'll blend it in. But and I'm gonna put some right here too while I have it. But that's what we used to do. We used to in high school, we used to, you know, she moved away, but we kept in contact because we didn't have, there weren't cell phones back there and there was no internet. So we wrote each other letters, but we drew comic, we do, drew uh, comics. In addition to just writing each other, that was that was fun. So I'm trying to wipe off some of that. Probably gonna come back and put some more white over top of it. If you look like if it seems like you like this one's probably fine. It's not too much. I'm barely tapping it. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and get white because I feel like there's I could put too much thalo. And you see by me putting Putting more white in there is helping me blend out that phthalo blue. Yeah, I'll never, I'll never forget that. That was so much fun when we were writing each other letters and making comic strips. Okay, so now I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some quinacridone because we need some quinacridone right about right here. So quinacridone magenta. And I'm doing this because I'm 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 picking up whatever, and I, I keep saying this, I'm picking up whatever this uh, headlight is picking up. So I'm gonna this, there's some gray inside here. I'm putting some gray. And I'm gonna put some around here. Maybe a little bit darker. Let's do a little bit darker right here. Put some more black. I have no idea. I apologize. This video is supposed to be two hours long, and if we've gone over, I'm, I apologize in advance. But I hope you're enjoying it. You can always pause it and come back and look at different parts of it. Okay, 
I'm just going to put a little bit more black in there. I'm going to paint this off. I'm just going to paint this guy. Kind of brush that in there. Brush that. Okay, awesome. We're going to come over here and do these ones the same way. I'm going to start off with some white. It also has connected on magenta coming down. Not too much though. Just spread them out like that. I'm gonna put some on the black. Just paint a little bit of the black so to have a have a, a hint of gray. Just scraping over top. If you're if you're put your you're, you can tell if you're if you're pushing down too hard on your brush if your if your colors are mixing all together. It should have like a marbly looking effect, and if it does, then you know you, you did it right. I'm gonna get some of the thalo blue and put it on the top of this the top of this part up here, and then I'm gonna dry brush it out. I'm just scraping it until it turns out to look like that. I'm gonna get a little bit more white. I feel like I lost the white. Clean that out. Dry brush it in. Some of that white over here too. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit. Um, I'm gonna make a little bit of gray. Just a little bit, because I need to come and make a a line right here, so it looks like this is dimensional. There, and I'm gonna get a little bit of white. Put it at the top. I need more white right here. Okay. So, Mars black and then white. Probably more white. And then we're going to come through, we're going to try to make, I'm lightly putting it in here, our lines for our lights. And that, this is the only one that has one, so I'm not going to put any on the other ones. Okay, now the moment you've been waiting for, we're going to make our, use my small brush, we're going to make our Volkswagen bus sign. Get some white. I'm just going to make a circle. Not to mess that circle up. Just coming around. But if you want to do something simple, like if you just want to, you know, do something on your own, because I know here here is the here is the deal. Here was a concern that I had. When I was learning how to paint and we're talking about trying to find the right type of formula to like the, the perfect formula that you should follow to make the perfect painting and there is no such thing I'm trying to make this circle as perfect as I can get it So then we're going to make our V's for Volkswagen. One here. And one there. Make one here. One there. Now, we're going to do something a little bit different. We've been using Thalo Blue, but on this one we're actually going to use Doxazine Purple.
I'm going to get some ducks in purple. And I'm just going to come around the edge here. And then I want to blend that in. If it's not, if it's not blending in, go back and get some white. And then get some more purple. And that blends in a little bit better. Let's put some more white to make that a little bit thicker. Okay. So that's that part. What I need to do really fast is put some, uh, I need to mix some, I'm going to mix some Mars Black, a little bit of Mars Black, a Quinacridone Magenta, more than anything. And then we need to come through and we need to make the crevices inside the bus. That needs doxazine purple. Darken that. And I'm going to make it down here. I'm trying. I'm trying to make like a dark, rich, like um, red color. I don't want it too purple. I don't want it more. There we go. Because if you're looking at your painting, you're saying, "Wait, it's missing something." You probably need a dark. And that's what I'm doing. I'm putting some dark in, in here. And this is actually supposed to come around like this. It needs to go right here. Right here. And I think, I think that's for the most part, that's it. I think some needs to go right here. Oh yeah, so I need to go right here. That's too thick, but that's fine. Okay, but we definitely need to make some around the um, around the headlights. Be careful, you don't want to mess up your um. Let me get my let me get my liner because I don't want to mess it up. But you need some around your headlights. Because if you look at that and it's not showing up, that's because it needs something dark around it. I'm going to put one around this one too. So the magic formula is that there is not one. You just have to get in there and do the work. I never forget Aaron Blaze said, he says, um, I think Aaron Blaze said it. I could be wrong. I'm sorry, Aaron Blaze. If, I, if you're the one that I said said it and it wasn't you. Let's put some of that right there too. That a lot of people want to know the, like the magic trick or I mean, without putting in the works, like the bottom line is you got to put the work in. All right. So that's pretty much, you know, we got to put some of that up there. Some of that dark color up there. Then do the, do this part. Because you notice when we come and add this dark color, everything's starting to pop. Looks more, looks more awesome. Okay. So now we're going to go in and we're going to put our burnt umber all around the, the sides. As soon as I can find my burnt umber. There's burnt umber. And then we are done, everyone. Yay, you made a Volkswagen bus. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. My water bucket is you really you really should have two things of water and but i'm i'm proud of myself though because usually i do have two things of water and i'm only using one to get this done 
So what I want you to do is just get, you're just going to get straight, um, you're going to get your burn number, have some um, also an antique white available so you can blend it out. You're just going to come through with that and then um, rinse some of it off and get some water. And you just want to you know, scrub that out. Just going around the edge, it's kind of like a oh, oh, kind of like a wash in a sense. That's all I'm kind of doing. It's feeling like a wash, but where I feel like if it needs some more antique white, I'm just going to come put some. That's why I said handy. Have the antique white handy because you don't want those harsh lines. So if you want, you can start off by, if you want, you can start off by put it, put some antique white. Like I just did, and then put some burn number. But you want to get like a real strong amount of burn number up against the up against your artwork. Because that's gonna give it that feel. I'm gonna kind of have it go this way. Like that. So for my tires that I this one over, I'm just going to come back and put go back over my tires. Like right there. Let's do that. Oh, keeps doing that. So frustrating. So so get your antique white like over here. I'm just going to get some. I'm just going to paint it. Paint up against that, and then I'm going to get my burn number. Put the burn number up against the edge, and then bring it out. That's probably the best way I can show you how to do it. And then you can just kind of dry brush it in whatever direction you want. But just make sure that you have it. Make sure it's that dark, dark color. It's almost like you're outlining it with burn number because that's exactly what you're doing. And then right here, I kind of want to kind of draw a line because I kind of want it to look like that's a wall behind the um, the Volkswagen bus. Get some more burn number. I mean the um, antique white. You see, I'm just scrubbing it. Get some more burn number and just scrubbing it any which way any direction I want and it gives it that really cool feel so I'm put some up here too try not to lose the shape of your um of your bus I'm get some more burn number Take your time, but have fun with it at the same time. But you got to make sure you have that sharp burnt umber line around the outer edge of the of the bus because that's what gives it that feel of that antique look, of that vintage look, I guess you can say. And then we're gonna come over, and you just keep going. Keep going, going, going. I'm gonna end this video in just a second because I'm pretty sure I went way over my um my time frame. But I'm just trying to show you how you can get that look. To me personally, I don't think this this Volkswagen bus would, would look the way it looks or stand out the way it stands out if it didn't have the um the burnt umber and the antique white. Because when you think of burn number and antique white, antique white, well, you think vintage, antique, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just kind of doing that. I'm going to get my 
start number nine. If you think you're going to mess up your Volkswagen bus by doing this, just leave it the way it is. Don't don't even attempt this if you feel uncomfortable with it. But me, I have to, I, I want, it, I, I honestly, I believe if there's any other type of vehicles that I'm going to do, I think I would like to have some kind of this kind of method happening because it really makes it makes the vehicle stand out more. some over here too if you want. All right. I'm just I'm just scrubbing the heck out of my brush. And I think we had this conversation before. You can't baby your brushes. Okay, so that is it. Let me go ahead and sign it. So I'm gonna sign it. I'm using, like I said, I'm using this gel pen. It's a jelly roll pen. I hope it shows up. It showed up on my last one. If not, I'll just go back and Put some put black over top of it okay i'll just go back and put some black over top of that but make sure you sign it that is it that is our um pink volkswagen bus tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that you you're able to do it and you post some on my on my website or my facebook page or my instagram page thank you for tuning in again once again this is katisha with kitty crow creations and remember to explore your inner artist Bye. I just wanted to add also that um, keep in mind that this was a, a, a painting that was two, two hours and like maybe 14 minutes. And honestly, the painting should have about, in my opinion, three more layers of paint. So if you want your, your painting to look a little bit more in depth and uh, you have more time, just feel free to go back and paint it with some more layers of paint. And I just wanted to uh, give that piece of information. Um, if you're looking at your painting, you're thinking, "Oh, it, it, I feel like it needs more paint." It probably does, but in the you know in the time frame that we have, I didn't want you sitting here for three and four hours trying to get three and four layers of paint. So I just wanted to add that. Bye. Have fun.